I think specifically for Joe Manchin, uh, who's been playing this uh, will he, won't he game for about mm-hmm. two years now. I think we're all a bit tired of it. Um, but it, he will get it. If he did get in the race, you can't help but think he will severely hinder Joe Biden's chances of re-election. Um, you would assume that he would peel off some of the more moderate Democrat votes. Uh, I question whether Manchin has enough national name recognition in order to pull off something like that. And I I think he would be, it would be nothing more than than really kind of a uh, a stunt. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I don't really know what he'd want to kind of get out of it because I don't think he has any viable or legitimate shot to uh, win, win a presidential election. Welcome to The Debrief, where we talk with the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the headlines they're covering and where the story's going next. I'm Sarah Bedford, and I'm here with managing editor Chris Irvine. And Chris, let's talk about some of the other guys in the 2024 race. Senator Joe Manchin has announced he's not going to run for re-election in West Virginia and is potentially exploring a presidential bid, and that makes pro-democracy folks pretty nervous. Why Why are they so nervous? I think there's a nervousness. uh, The way that the U.S. political system, especially when it comes to presidential elections, is set up, it's a a two-person race all the time. And... You never. I think there's always the fear of the unknown that you you never want to get that third party in uh, mm-hmm. because it could screw up the chances of the other guy. I think specifically for Joe Manchin, uh, who's been playing this uh, will he won't he game for about mm-hmm. two years now. I think we're all a bit tired of it. Um, but it, he will get it if he did get in the race. You can't help but think he will severely hinder Joe Biden's chances of re-election. Um, you would assume he would peel off some of the more moderate Democrat votes. Uh, I question whether Manchin has enough national name recognition in order to pull off something like that. And I, I think he would be, it would be nothing more than, than really kind of a, uh, a stunt. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I don't really know what he'd want to kind of get out of it because I don't think he has any viable or legitimate shot to uh, win win a presidential election. Um, so I'm curious though to see how it plays out because he's clearly got one eye on it. And uh, I, I think it's partly down to the fact that people don't particularly want to see Biden v. Trump round two, but mm-hmm. it s- certainly looks like that's what we're going to be getting. Right. And then on the other side of this rematch, you have RFK Jr., who is who is a Democrat, but is running as an independent. And there's thoughts that maybe he could pose the same sort of problem for Donald Trump, right? Sure. I mean, I, I think RFK running as a Democrat initially was a little bit of a red herring. And mm-hmm. um, an independent makes more sense for him. Uh, we all know that Kennedy comes with certain, you know, warts in his right <laughs> he's so to speak. In his closet. I mean, he's, he's an open book about it to be fair to him but mm-hmm. uh yes you would think that he would peel off some of the uh disenfranchised trump voters that maybe are kind of i don't know getting a little bit tired of the the message and mm-hmm. and kennedy might offer something a little bit different maybe somewhat in the kind of populist vein again he is by no stretch got a chance uh here mm-hmm. and i think it will be interesting to see if Mansion or or Kennedy even makes it past the primaries, or if they'll just kind of fade away into the background. Part of the reason I think Kennedy did kind of relaunch himself as an independent is because he came in with this big flurry as a Democrat, and there was about two three weeks of people taking him seriously, and then it all seemed to sort of dissipate. Uh, so it's never a good sign when you're relaunching your campaign, you know, weeks and weeks after you've just launched it. Right. Not yeah. not for him. Um, and then and then finally, one of the other, you know, characters in this 2024 conversation is California Governor Gavin Newsom, who's managed to keep himself in national headlines pretty regularly. Do you do you see him as sort of continuing to position himself to be the nominee? I think that Gavin Newsom's shadow campaign, whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it, is one of the most fascinating subplots of this election cycle. And it might be because the incumbent Democrat is ultimately boring, right. <laughs> if you want to uh, you know, call a spade a spade. Uh, but, but even Biden being in California for uh, this APEC summit and, and saying some very nice effusive things about Newsom, I don't know if Biden sort of sees Newsom now as the heir apparent when perhaps before mm-hmm. he maybe saw it as Kamala Harris. Um, I, I think it certainly seems to me that Newsom 
if should something terrible happen to Joe Biden, Newsom would seem to be the guy that could most easily step in and do it. He does have some timing issues with regards to kind of getting on ballots and stuff for different uh, primaries. Mm -hmm. I do think ultimately it will lead to a 2028 uh, campaign more so than 2024. But he, he he seems to be kind of, you know, put me in the game coach uh, mm -hmm. as, as much as anybody. Uh, and that would really kind of shake things up. And I'm, I'm, I am fascinated by it. I'm interested in everything that he's doing right now. Well, Chris, thank you so much for being here today. You can get more reporting from Chris and the rest of the political team at WashingtonExaminer.com.